Hi, welcome back. In this video, we are going to build a conversational AI chatbot using Kern Refinery, Rasa NLU and a little bit of Python. To do this, we are going to use the conversational AI sample project that we already provide in the Kern Refinery. Of course, you could also use your own custom dataset for this. Let's get going. First up, we're going to take a look at the data that we will be using for our chatbot. The data contains user inputs for the banking industry, such as What should I do when my visa card is stolen? Is it true that opening a new account can decrease your credit score? Or what is the bank balance for all my accounts? Basically, our chatbot works like a classifier that learns to correctly identify the intent of a user. Using this method, we can identify topics that the user is interested in and then answer questions or offer further help. Let's now jump into the refinery to set up the project. Under Sample Projects, you can find three really cool sample projects with ready-to-use datasets. We want to use the conversational AI use case for now, so let's create a new project using this dataset. You can choose to either only load in the raw data or load the completely finished project. Once the project is loaded, we can start exploring the data. In the Overview tab, we can see that all the data is already labeled. We can see the distribution of the labels down below. In total, we have 1,800 data points for 11 labels in total. This should be enough data to train a cool chatbot to identify these topics. You can also see how not all of the data was labeled manually. Over here on the heuristics page, you'll see how we leveraged weak supervision to automatically label a large portion of the dataset. We mainly used handwritten Python heuristics as well as an active learner to do this. If you want to learn more about active learning and weak supervision in Kern Refinery, I will link a couple of cool videos in the description down below. As you can see, we have some really cool data at hand. But how can we use this data to build a chatbot with Rasa? That's where our Python SDK comes into play. With our free Python Software Development Kit, we provide an adapter that is able to connect to your Kern Refinery project and convert all the data inside into a handy.yaml file, which will be used to train a Rasa chatbot. To do that, let's first set up a virtual environment. I am using Debian Linux, but all these steps should be similar on macOS as well as Windows. You'll find all the necessary comments for all platforms in the description down below. To create a virtual environment, type python3 minus m vnv and then the name of the new environment. In this case, I'm going to call it banking environment or banking minus env. To activate the new environment on Linux, type source banking minus env slash bin slash activate. Now we have a dedicated Python environment where we can install our Python SDK as well as the Rasa library. Simply type pip install refinery minus python minus SDK and pip install Rasa. To set up the project for the Rasa model, type Rasa init into the command line. Set the path where you want your model to be set up. After that, you can train a Hello World chatbot, after which you will have all the necessary files needed to create a chatbot with Rasa. Rasa chatbots are mainly set up with .yaml files. Now, let's take a closer look at what files we exactly need for creating a chatbot. Here we have a nlu.yaml file, which contains all the data needed to create an intent classifier. The nlu.yaml file 
will be provided by our refinery Python SDK. I'll show you how to do that very soon. We also have the stories.yaml file in which we create and manage the dialog path we want our chatbot to be able to handle. Stories are very powerful because they are flexible and the underlying Rasa technology can leverage story path in a very intelligent manner. The rules.yaml file is similar in that we can define certain path that we want the dialog to go through. But rules are way less flexible and you shouldn't overuse them. Finally, the domain.yaml file is bringing all the previous files together. Here you can also define the responses that your chatbot is going to give. Before we continue, let's use the refinery Python SDK to create an nlu.yaml file. I have created a notebook here and imported the client and Rasa adapter from our SDK. You can log into the client with your email, password, as well as a project ID to get access to a specific project. The ID can be found in the URL of the Refinery web app. Once you are logged in, you can call rasa.build underscore intent underscore yaml to create the nlu.yaml file. Put in the logged in client as an argument, as well as the text and the name of the column where the weak supervision labels are stored in. After you run the code, you will find a nlu.yaml file in the data folder of your project. If we take a closer look into the nlu.yaml file, we can now see that all of our data has been converted from the Köln refinery into a .yaml file with just a few lines of code. We now could train a chatbot with this data and it would be able to correctly identify intents. To make the chatbot more lifelike, we can also add some more intents, for example to detect if we want to greet the chatbot or say thanks and goodbye. To illustrate how you could use this data to create a functioning chatbot, we are going to build a small customer support assistant that is able to help you to deactivate your stolen or lost credit card. Let's jump into the stories.yaml to see how we could do that. Each story is defined by multiple steps. The first step is initiated when the created chatbot detects the intent card stolen. We then offer to deactivate the card, which the user can affirm or deny. If the user denies, we state an emergency number, just in case. If the person would like the bot to deactivate the card, a form is activated. Forms are basically loops that ask for specific information. In this case, it's the birthday of the person and a card number. The information is stored in so-called slots, which you can think of as the long-term memory of our chatbot. Once a slot is filled, the bot will remember all the information in this slot, even if the conversation might take a different path than the one we desire. After we get the information from the customer, we use a custom action to respond with a confirmation that the card is indeed deactivated. Custom actions can be built using Python. You don't have to use them, but I implemented one here to give you an illustration of how you could use them. The custom action here retrieves information from one of the slots and then uses it to utter a confirmation message to the user. Before we can test out the chatbot, there are still two things we need to configure. First, we need to create a file called endpoints.yaml and paste this code in there. Without this, we couldn't use our actions locally in our chatbot. And second, I am using a pre-built model called Duckling to retrieve the birthday information and store it in a slot. Duckling is really good at detecting entities such as time and is also really easy to install. All you need to do is install Docker if you haven't already and then run docker run minus r 8000 8000 rasa 
slash duckling. Then in the config.yaml file, you need to add the duckling entity extractor in the pipeline with these parameters. Now we have everything in place for our chatbot. Rasa is a very capable tool with many functionalities and showing you all of them in detail would break the scope of this video. Before we finally test out the chatbot, we would like to remind you that you can feel free to ask any questions about this topic in the comments below. Now, let's finally start our chatbot. First, open another terminal window and run Rasa run actions to load in all the custom actions we previously built. To activate the chatbot itself, go to the previous terminal and run Rasa shell. You can also use Rasa interactive to get more information about what the bot is doing in the background. Because we are civilized, we first greet our bot. After that, we state that our credit card was stolen and then we need help. The bot correctly identifies this and offers help. Because we do want to deactivate our card, we continue with the process, after which we will be asked for our birthday. But wait a second, who are we even talking to right now? Is this even a robot? Hmm, okay, seems like this is really a robot. Because the chatbot remembered that we actually wanted to deactivate our card, it will answer our random question like this and then go back to the actual process, which is asking about our card number. And hooray! The deactivation was successful. Let's thank the bot and wish him a pleasant rest of the day. Now, as you can see, chatbots can be really powerful when they are set up right and if they are fed with good data. A good practice is to build chatbots iteratively and improve them over time. We think the chatbot you saw here is a fantastic base on which you could build a great chatbot for the banking industry. We really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please leave a thumbs up and if you loved it, subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you don't miss out on any amazing content in the future. Thank you for watching and have a fantastic day. Goodbye.